Save the date. The James Webb Telescope is about to launch. Imagine you're flipping through the pages of your old family photo album. You start from the last ones, the more recent ones. There you're eating ice cream in Italy in 2019. Then you arrive at your childhood pictures. You look so cute back then. You were living also in a different house. There are some pictures of your fourth birthday. You're blowing the candles and smiling. Then you realize that before this, there are no pictures. How is that possible? There should be some pictures of you as a baby. Where did they go? One day, someone comes and offers to reveal some earlier pictures of you as a baby. What would you do? I bet you'd probably want to see them. This is pretty much what the James Webb Telescope is offering us. The chance to see such pictures for the whole universe. Have you ever heard about it? It will be our best ever space telescope. And now we have a launch date, December 18th, 2021. The James Webb Space Telescope, also called Webb or JWST, is a large space-based observatory optimized for infrared wavelengths, which will complement and extend discoveries of the Hubble Space Telescope. As you can see from these two pictures, James Webb and Hubble are pretty different telescopes. Webb will primarily look at the universe in the infrared, while Hubble studies it primarily at optical and ultraviolet wavelengths. Webb also has a much bigger mirror than Hubble. This larger light-collecting area means that Webb can peer farther back into time than Hubble is capable of doing. Hubble is in a very close orbit around the Earth, while Webb will be 1.5 million kilometers away at the second Lagrange point. At its peak, as many as 2,000 scientists and technicians were working on Webb, with a total of about 10,000 people involved in its construction over the decades. It will have longer wavelength coverage and greater improved sensitivity. But why did scientists choose the infrared domain over the optical one? Well, when you're building a telescope, you have to understand how further you want to go. Observations at longer wavelengths enable us to look farther back in time to find the first galaxies that formed in the early universe. If you take a picture of the night sky in the visible domain, you will notice that, correspondingly to the galactic center, you can't really see the stars. This is because galactic dust doing its job, that is, absorbing light. But since dust is less sensitive to longer wavelengths, if you change your filter from visible to infrared, you will observe and count a lot of objects in that direction. And also you will be able to see some other luminous objects that you couldn't notice while looking in the visible domain. Such objects are, for example, distant quasars and galaxies. This is why we need infrared observations, to go further and further. James Webb will also be able to peer inside dust clouds where stars and planetary systems are forming today. Astronomers from all over the world can't wait for this moment to come. The launch of the James Webb Telescope. The beginning of a new era in our understanding of the universe. Of course, there are plenty of things that could go wrong. For example, are we really sure that they will launch it December 2021, as stated? We have to hope so. And also after the launch, it could have some troubles. NASA itself said that there are over 300 ways that the telescope could fail. First, it will be launched from the European Space Agency's launch site near Kourou, French Guiana. About 28 minutes after liftoff, it will detach from its launch vehicle and begin what NASA scientists called the most complex sequence of deployments ever attempted in a single space mission. This deployment will see Webb unfold and unfurl its sun shield once in space, and it includes some hundreds of single points of failure, as the lead mission systems engineer Mike Menzel said. According to him, there are 344 single points of failure items on average. Approximately 80% of those are associated with the deployment maneuver. But before heading to that, let's see what happened in the last months. The telescope was shipped in a specially built French vessel named MN Calibre, designed to transport aerospace components, with the telescope inside a watertight chamber. A specialized freight company oversaw the transport, beginning with moving the container and telescope from Northrop Grumman's facilities through Southern California's freeway system to the ship, docked by Huntington Beach, California. The massive clean air chamber was built so the telescope would not be exposed to vibrations. Any excessive g-forces of acceleration and deceleration 
the rolling or pitching on the water due to sea swell or wind or excessive temperatures. The 9,300-km sea voyage took Webb from California through the Panama Canal to Port de Paris-Cabo on the Coru French River in French Guiana on the northeastern coast of South America, a crossing that was also the last major terrestrial voyage of the James Webb Space Telescope. In fact, its assembly began in 2013 in Maryland, then continued in Texas in 2017 with cryogenic testing, and finally in California in 2018. The Goddard Space Flight Center was its home until September 24th, the day it was transported to the port to be boarded and transported by ship. Have you ever thought that in order to launch a telescope, you have to take care of all this stuff? Everything needed such an enormous effort, so we really wish things will be going good in the next month when JWST will undergo some tests to verify that the transport has not caused any damage. Also during that month, engineers will proceed to the complex integration of the telescope and the Ariane 5 rocket. The whole project of the Webb telescope was in fact born around the specifications of the launcher, whose capacity and load size was one of the first constraints of the engineers. Inside the launcher, the available volume has a diameter of 4.6 for a height of 16.2 meters, and all measurements, both of the cargo bay and the telescope, were calculated to the centimeter to accommodate the instrument folded in on itself like origami. When it is a week before launch, the telescope will be placed on the rocket and six days before launch, the two fairings will be positioned. Finally, the day before launch, Ariane 5 will be positioned on the pad. We can't describe all of the 344 traps scattered along the road that the Webb telescope will travel because if we did, this video would end on the launch day. But of course we can tell you the most important and dangerous will surely be the following. First one, presuming no further delays in its path to the launch pad, early in the morning of December 18th, Webb will blast off with a slight eastward trajectory over the Atlantic Ocean. The crucial thing here is to have a reliable launcher, as Ariane 5 seems to be, and to make sure Webb can support the stress of launch. All of this has already been tested and everything was good. So scientists have some confidence that this first moment of terror will go smoothly. Second one. Although the solar array deployment is a relatively simple procedure, its success is critical to power all following operations. In spring of 2019, the array was removed from the spacecraft for deployment testing. To minimize friction and mimic the zero-gravity conditions of deep space, the team conducted tests by hanging the array on its side. As the telescope nears its third day in space, Webb will begin to deploy one of its most intricate and prominent instruments, the Sun Shield. The Sun Shield separates the observatory into a warm, sun-facing side and a cold side. The five-layer Sun Shield keeps sunlight from interfering with the sensitive telescope instruments. In order to observe infrared light from faint and distant objects, the telescope itself must be kept extremely cold. This is the reason why Webb has this five-layer, tennis-court-sized sunshield that acts like a parasol, providing shade. To open it, 150 release mechanisms must fire correctly over three days. The complicated deployment involves around 7,000 parts, including 400 pulleys, 8 motors, and 140 release actuators. Everybody knows it will be a real challenge to ensure that these five extremely thin layers, more than 20 meters long, unfold perfectly keeping the right separation from each other. The five layers are needed to block and redirect enough heat to get the telescope down to require temperatures with margin, NASA's member James Cooper said. The fifth layer is mostly for margin against imperfections, micrometeoroid holes, etc. So when will the observational mission begin? Well, it will take some time. In the second, third, and fourth months of flight, Webb has to calibrate itself, looking for some well-known stars and mapping their position, and also will try to point out a single bright star in order to demonstrate that it can acquire data and lock onto targets. In the fifth and sixth months, all the operating modes of scientific instruments will be meticulously calibrated. At that moment, Webb will have gained the ability to track moving targets such as comets, moons, and smaller asteroids, as well as planets. But this won't be the end of the job. It will follow an early release observations phase, which will illustrate the imaging capabilities of the observatory. This will be a crucial test for Webb. If you send a telescope in space, you have to make sure everything is working perfectly fine. 
Indeed, this was not the case for the Hubble Space Telescope back in the 90s, which suffered from aberration issues that had to be fixed while it was already floating in space. In fact, Hubble was finally launched in 1990, but its main mirror had been ground incorrectly, resulting in spherical aberration that compromised the telescope's capabilities. The optics were corrected to their intended quality by a servicing mission in 1993. Finally, after about six months, all the tests will be completed and Webb will begin its science operations, which will lead us to a completely new and amazing understanding of our universe. This is what the JWST journey will look like according to the ESA. The JWST orbit is a so-called quasi-Lyapunov orbit around the L2 Lagrangian point. It will resemble pretty much the form of the orbit you can see on the right side of the image. Let's cross our fingers for the James Webb Telescope. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Will you follow the launch of the JWST? How are you feeling about it? Let us know in the comment section below. See you next time on the channel.